Hi and welcome to this look at the 14 day weather prospects. It has been a cold month so far but we've not had anything like the famous freeze of January 1987 which was record breaking. The chart you can see is from the 12th of January 1987 and I can remember the previous day delivering newspapers in the Yorkshire world and the cold was absolutely bone chilling. As the uh, morning progressed, the snow fell heavier and heavier and the roads became absolutely treacherous. I'm not expecting a repeat of that in the next couple of weeks, but there is the chance and a growing one at that of a cold or very cold spell of weather across all of the UK. I'll start by taking a look at the picture across the North Atlantic and Europe. So this is at 12 GMT, Tuesday the uh, 12th of January. It's quite interesting because what we can see is cold air pushing down from the north across uh, northern and eastern parts of the United Kingdom and we've got a weather front across the southwest and milder air associated with with it. I'll play the sequence because for our, even in the short term there is going to be some interesting weather around. Here we go and I'm going to stop it there which is Thursday uh, 14th of January at 00, 00 GMT. Now immediately things become quite uncertain and complicated. What we can see here on this uh, plot is outbreaks of rain pushing eastwards across the United Kingdom and there is a risk of them turning to sleet or snow in northeastern areas. What's happening is the milder, uh, milder air is pushing them from the west, it's bumping into the cold air mass and the rain is turning to sleet or snow in places but just quite where that boundary it becomes established is it's difficult to pin down. I'll just jump out of here and show you the potential for sleet and snow according to one or two of the other computer models. I'll bring up the Meteo France projection for 10 a.m. on Thursday the 14th of January what we can see is snow quite widespread across northeastern Britain um, and certainly that suggests a likelihood of significant accumulations and uh, disruption in, in places particularly over high ground but not only at high levels there could be there could be several centimeters even down to uh, to low levels I'll just jump to the next chart which is also from Meteo France model it's for 18 GMT on Thursday the 14th of January and I just brought this one up because it shows the snow risk actually pushing southwards into Lincolnshire and possibly parts of East Anglia for a time before that area of wet weather clears away overnight. That is something to look out for. Um, I, I wouldn't expect there to be too much snow in these areas but nonetheless there could be there could be a little bit around on Thursday evening. Another view from the uh, of 15 GMT on Thursday the 14th of January this time from the German icon model. Here we've got the potential for snow being even more widespread and you can see again it's, it's it looks like there's going to be some heavy snow in northeastern Britain which the uh, Meteo France uh, projections also showed but here the snow risk is further south and at an earlier stage and it's also heavier. I suspect this will probably be over cooking the extent of the snow but again it just serves to highlight the uncertainty so keep a close eye on things during Wednesday and Thursday. It's I think it's also just worth pointing out on these charts what we have is a cold air essentially situated over eastern Britain but it is a lot milder in the west and the southwest. If I go back to the Europe and North Atlantic sequence just to continue playing things forward here we go and 
I'm going to stop it here at 03 GMT on Saturday the 16th of January. And what we can see now is another area of cloud and rain pushing in from the Atlantic, pushing eastwards across the United Kingdom. Once more, there is the potential for some of this to turn to sleet or snow. Again, the risk is, is greatest in the northern half of Britain, but one or two of the model runs have shown that risk, perhaps spreading southwards into East Anglia, uh, for at least for a short time on Saturday. The, uh, it is still quite a long way off in terms of uh, the pinpoints and the details. Once again, though, it's something to keep an eye on. There could be some disruptive snow in northeastern Britain in particular. I'll continue this sequence and we head into next week. Here we are, 09 GMT, Monday the 18th of January. At that point, there is more of an Atlantic influence being shown, so basically the whole of the country should be somewhat milder. We've got uh, more uh, disturbances pushing in from the west, so keeping things quite unsettled. I'll just resume the sequence and take it to its end, which is there at 18 GMT, Tuesday the 19th of January. Now at the start, I mentioned the possibility of it turning much colder. And this period is when things start to happen. At the eight, what we can see here is an area of low pressure centered across the UK. And as it begins to pull away, we bring down much, much colder air from the north. And just on the edge of this chart here, uh, we've got Iceland at the top left and and Greenland just, just about visible there in the corner. But what we can start to see happening is high pressure begins to build in the Iceland Greenland region and that is possibly going to become the key feature of weather through next week. But there is still quite a lot of uncertainty about the details. I'll now switch across to the 16-day ensemble plots to uh, take a look at things in a little bit more detail. This one is for London. On the top half it shows 850 HPA temperatures. On the lower half it's precipitation. And remember that each line on this chart represents the output from one of the individual runs within the ensemble model. What we can see on the top half is that during the next week or so, it's mixed. 850 HPA temperatures are fluctuating. That ties in with what I was discussing about cold and uh, mild air masses jockeying for position over the UK. By around about the 20th, 21st of January, you can see a clear downward trend in upper air temperatures appearing. The vast majority of runs are bringing in cold or very cold air across across London and uh, southern Britain. A few keep it milder. Uh, so what, I, what that suggests is that a milder outcome can't yet be discounted. It remains a possibility. But most of the runs, in fact, big majority of them are going for a spell of cold or very cold weather. Towards the end of the uh, plot, around about the 26th of January, there is an upwards trend again in temperatures. That could well be suggesting an increased possibility of milder air returning from the southwest. Often in this type of pattern, we get areas of low pressure pushing in from the southwest um, and, and milder air making inroads into the, into the cold block. That is very uncertain. The other thing which isn't at all clear at the moment is the extent of a snow risk. Um, the snow row across the bottom indicates the number of runs on a given day which are, which, which, which are forecasting snow to fall. The maximum value it can have is 33. So you can see that in the short term during the next week, the values are very low on all of the days. But by around about the 20th, they begin to increase and they're currently reaching about 11 or 12 on, on quite a few days towards the, in the last third of the month. 
So not particularly high, it has to be said at the moment, but I wouldn't be at all surprised to see those increase quite significantly in the coming days if this pattern remains locked in. I'll quickly show you the same chart for Cardiff. Here we are. Um, there's not a great deal of difference there with the London one. So that to me suggests not much variance across the southern half of the UK showing up at the moment. What about the north? Here we go to Glasgow. There is a there is a difference here, which is that right at the end of the plot, there is not a signal for it to turn milder. You can see the thick purple line there, which shows the mean of all the runs, remains well below the black line indicating the 30-year average. What those three charts to me suggest is that if there is going to be a return to milder conditions uh, towards the end of January, it's likely to be approaching from the southwest, hence the milder air reaches seven counties first. Now, if that is what happens, it also leads to the possibility of heavy snowfall as that milder air progresses uh, northwards across the UK. So, because again, you get you get that boundary zone between the cold and the mild air masses. It's it's impossible to say if that will happen and if it does where the greatest risk of snowfall would be. Historically it tends to be the M4 corridor and northwards but as I say I, I really wouldn't worry about that at this stage. It may not even, uh, the cold spell may not even develop as is being shown. To give you an idea of possible pressure patterns I'll show a couple more charts. This one is from the GFS model, valid for 6GMT on Friday the 22nd of January. Key things to note are really this big area of high pressure centred over Greenland. Often a prerequisite for a lengthy cold spell. What it does is blocks the flow of Atlantic weather systems or at least sends them further southwards. That allows cold or very cold Arctic air to move down across the UK, which is what we can see happening here. With those disturbances tracking further south from the Atlantic, there is always the potential for them to begin pushing up into uh, up from the southwest. As I've been hinting, that brings a risk of more prolonged periods of snow. It also can and often does lead to milder air returning into southern counties as they make their way northeastwards. But as I say at this stage, don't worry about the details. It's just a big picture that needs to be looked at. Another chart here showing something similar. It's from the ECM model and is valued for Thursday, the 21st of January. So a little bit earlier. Uh, once again, you can see big area of high pressure centered over Greenland. One thing to keep an eye on um, is the possibility of everything just being pushed slightly further west. If that is what happens, the core of a cold plunge from the, Ar from the Arctic may well end up in to the west of the UK and the mid-Atlantic. It is just something to, to keep an eye on it, and, and it would lead to the likelihood of cold, the coldest conditions being restricted to possibly the northern and western parts of the United Kingdom. As I say, that is very uncertain, uh, but, it, but it can happen. It does happen at times. OK, I'll summarise all of that. In the short term, it's a changeable picture as cold and mild air masses vie for supremacy over the UK. Disturbances pushing from the west, bringing rain, which could turn to sleet or snow at times as it bunts into the colder air over the east and particularly the northeast of Britain. Then, as we head through the final third of January, there's a growing signal for a UK-wide cold spell to develop. It could well be the coldest weather that we've seen since uh, the beast from the east in March 2018, and the risk of snow, although very, very uncertain at this range, may be more widespread than it has been at any point so far this winter. So definitely something to keep an eye on during the coming days. So I'll leave you with that very wintry outlook. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you for watching now. Bye.